This is the University of North Carolina, and it's an amazing place. I know this because I spent seven years of my life working here. I remember when I first got on campus and I was walking around and I was just admiring these just gorgeous brick buildings, these massive trees, and just experiencing the energy, and I felt like I need to pinch myself because I had landed my dream job at the age of 28. But it came with the cost. You see, when you're a tenure line professor at one of the top universities in the United States, it comes with an intensive tenure review process. And essentially what that means is this. A bunch of people, many of whom you've never met, evaluate your materials, and they decide whether or not you're good enough to be at the university. Well, after six years, my materials went up, and they decided that I wasn't good enough. I had lost my dream job at the age of 34. I remember when I first found out about this decision, I was walking from my boss's office, and the first thing I felt was this. I felt confused. Because while you always hear these horror stories about tenure, you never imagine they're going to happen to you. And then as I thought about it more and more, I became angry and frustrated because I felt like I had done everything they asked me to and more, and I had ended up losing my job. And then I finally settled upon an emotion that was far worse than the others, shame. And I have to admit, I'm not sure I knew what shame meant before this talk, but when I was getting ready, I watched Brene Brown's The Power of Vulnerability talk, and she defined shame as this, the feeling that you get of not being enough when you're disconnected from a group. And that's exactly how I felt. I remember walking in to teach my grad students, and I remember being embarrassed because I knew that they knew that I had been fired. And it was the same with my colleagues, and it was the worst moment in my professional career. But I want to change direction, and I want to change direction by doing this, asking a question. And that question is this, what if the situation I just described to you wasn't at all how I just described it? And listen, I'm not saying that I lied to you, because I absolutely got fired from the University of North Carolina, and those were the exact motions that I felt. Instead, what I'm proposing is this, that I could have seen the situation in an entirely different way and avoided those emotions altogether. So the question becomes this then, what if I or you could take any negative situation that we're facing and by shifting the way that we see it, use it to go out and to spark our potential to achieve something truly extraordinary? I now realize that this is totally possible, and what I want to share with you today is this. I want to share with you three steps that you can use to do this, and what those are is choice, perspective, and gift. Now, you might be asking yourself, how do you know that these things work? And I can tell you that this is the reason why, because these were the exact progressions that I learned about when I was going through this 10-year situation that allowed me to go out and to spark my potential, so I was able to go out and arrive at a point in my career and life that I absolutely love. They also happen to be founded upon these just extraordinary human beings who have faced these just crazy challenges and used those to go out and achieve these amazing things. And so what I'd like to do is share with you the first one. And what it is is this is choice. This person on the screen's name is Viktor Frankl. And Viktor Frankl is an author and psychiatrist. And the one thing that I did every single day after this situation when I was experiencing these emotions is I would get up at 5 a.m. every single morning and I would read. I would try to point my brain towards something good, and one morning I was reading his book, Man's Search for Meaning, and I came upon this thought that drastically changed the way, not only the way I saw the situation, but that I, the way that I saw the world. And what it was is this, he says, everything can be taken from a human being, except for the last of the human freedoms. And what that is, is the ability to always choose your response to any given set of circumstances, no matter what to always be able to choose your way. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You might be saying, that sounds great in theory, but I've got real problems. It's possible that you have a sick kid at home and you haven't slept for a week straight. Or you're having financial or marital problems and you don't know how you're gonna get through that. Or maybe you lost somebody in your life and that's caused you a lot of pain. And I'm not saying that those aren't real problems, but what I'm saying is this. Before you dismiss this, I wanna give you context because I think it changes everything. You see, Viktor Frankl wasn't just an author and psychiatrist, he was a concentration camp survivor. And he and his entire family were placed into these camps into some of the worst possible living circumstances you could ever be in. And one by one, his brother, his mom, and his wife were murdered in these camps. Now, I don't know about you, but if that happened to me, I'm pretty sure I would have been focused on something like being angry or even irate. I'm thinking I might have even wanted to get revenge, and yet in the middle of that, 
he may have felt those same things, but he instead decided to focus on this, getting out of the camp. Because he believed that he could go out and he could teach people that you always have a choice, no matter what, in your life. And that was the part when I realized that I had a choice. I didn't have to stand for the things that I was feeling. And that moved me to step number two. And what step number two is, is perspective. And what perspective has to do with is this. When you are facing something negative in your life and you are focused on the negative, there is always a different way to see it. And if you can learn to point your brain towards the productive, that is the gift that can change your entire life. This is exactly what Viktor Frankl did. In a situation where it was littered with just these negative things, he instead chose to focus on a small sliver of opportunity. And it was that ability that not only got him out of the camp, but that allowed him to go out and share his message and impact millions of people. It's absolutely remarkable. And what I realized in that moment is if he can choose that response to that situation, surely I can change my response to a tenure decision and losing my job. Yet the most interesting thing happened. When I went out and I tried to do it, I couldn't pull it off. I just wasn't able to do it right away. So I decided to start smaller. I thought if I could change littler things in my day, I could work my way up to change the bigger things. And I want to give you an example. This is my gorgeous daughter, Maya. And one day I was playing, I was taking care of Maya, and I'm typing on my computer, and she says, Daddy. And I look up from my computer, and she's pointing at me, and she says, Daddy, I have poopy on my finger. And I look over, and sure enough, there's something brown on her finger, and I say, sweetheart, no, that's chocolate milk. She had been drinking chocolate milk, and I was sure that that was what was on her finger, positive that was on her finger. Now, anybody who has a three-year-old knows that when you tell them something they don't want to hear, it generally does not go well at all. And she said in a very angry voice, Daddy, no, Daddy, poopy. And as she's walking closer and I look at her finger, I go, sure enough, that's, that's poopy. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> uh, no joke, no joke. So I do what any reasonable father would do in a very panicked tone. I say, sweetheart, go over to the towel. I'm going to get you changed. And as she turns around, I realize I got a much bigger problem than I thought because it is going all the way up her back, up her shoulder blades, out her shirt, and that is how she got it on her finger. <laughs> and as I'm, no, as I'm following her over there, this smell is really bad. And I am not capable of changing this diaper well. And in the moment, I really dislike being there. In fact, I hate being there. I'd rather be anywhere than changing this diaper. I want to stop right there. Because this was the exact type of situation I wanted to change. And about a week earlier, I had gone to my wife and I said, Brandy, sweetheart. I said, I have this idea. She always, I always have ideas. And I say, Sudie, I said, I think you can learn to love changing a dirty diaper. And she looked at me like I was insane. And she says, no, you can't. You only change like 5% of the diapers. What do you know about it? And I, and I had to admit she was totally right. So I started to change more diapers to improve my credibility and to improve my skill set. Okay? So I want to ask you, show of hands. How many people in the house would agree with my wife? It is not realistic to think you can learn to love to change a dirty, stinky, nasty diaper. Show of hands. Let's see it. That's what I thought. And I'm guessing there's some of you that are even hesitant saying, you're insane. I'm not even going to raise my hand. For those of you here, I want to talk to you about perspective point. This person on the screen's name is Tom Ryan. Tom Ryan is the head wrestling coach at Ohio State University, one of the best coaches in the country, and an extraordinary human being. 15 years ago, Tom Ryan was at his house, and his kids were playing hide-and-seek when his five-year-old son, Teague, collapses on the ground, and he's not breathing. He's unconscious. And Tom and them call the ambulance, and he's on the ground, and he's trying to resuscitate him, doing CPR, trying to bring him back. 45 minutes later, Teague is pronounced dead. And Tom said it's one of the most painful moments in his life. And the fact that he took that situation... And instead of just staying there, said, I'm going to live in his honor. And he went out and achieved what he did is so unbelievable to me. But that's not the only lesson here because we're talking about perspective point. I want you to come back with me now to that point where I'm on the ground and I'm changing that diaper. And it is all over the place. And it is all over my hands. And I am doing my best to change this thing. And I hate that I have to be here. And what I learned is it's perspective point. And in a moment when I hate that, all I have to do is do one thing. And my entire physiology, psychology changes. And what it is is this. All I have to say is Tom Ryan would love to have the opportunity to be right here with his kid. And just like that, I go from hating the situation 
to loving this situation. And I feel blessed to be here right now changing this dirty diaper with my daughter. And that is one of the greatest powers that you have. The ability to take any situation and shift your perspective point and change the entire thing. And that moves us to step number three. And what step number three is, is it's a progression of the other two. And it's something a little bit different. But the one thing I did, I continued to grow, I continued to read, I continued to look for the positive. And one day I was reading and I found this quote from Oprah and I absolutely loved it. It said that failure is a way to show us that our lives are moving in a different direction. And that we should try something different. And I'll be straight with you. The first thing I thought is, what does Oprah know about something like this? She's one of the most successful people on the planet. But as I studied more, I realized that Oprah knows a lot about this. Oprah grew up in a household where she was abused by people very close to her, family members. And yet through it all, she had this incredible ability. She still had a vision to say, I can go out and I can impact millions of people's lives with my message. And then she went out and she got her first job in television and they fired her and they told her, you're not good enough. And most of us, when that happens, what we do is we go back and we think, oh, well, maybe it's not meant to be. But she didn't do that. And instead, what she did is this. She used that situation as an opportunity to redirect and to go a different way. And now she truly is impacting millions of lives. She's not alone. Kyle Maynard is a quad amputee. And from the time he's young, people have said, oh, well, you can't do those things. And yet he's gone out and he's done things like he's climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, a mountain that people die trying to climb every single year. It's absolutely unbelievable. J.K. Rowling was homeless in her car with a baby coming. When she had so much pain in that situation, po broke, homeless, in her car, that she said, I'm not going to stand for this anymore. I want something better for my baby. And that was the passion that allowed her to go out and write the Harry Potter series. And that's when a light went off in my head that I realized this, that those, none of those things were failures in the way that we see them. They were opportunities to learn. And even better than that, they were gifts. Gifts that allowed them to dig so much deeper and find an entirely different level that they had no idea that they had before. And that was the part that sparked their potential and allowed them to go out and achieve these amazing things. And that was the part for me that I realized it's a gift. And I, but what, first what I did is I came back and I said, what's the gift in your situation? And at first my ego wouldn't let me see it because it was in the way, but as I asked it, it became clear. And what it was is this. I'm not meant to be a professor at the University of North Carolina. I'm meant to be out trying to inspire people to live to their full potential. And right now on this stage, that gift is completely clear because the worst moment in my professional career in a span of a year and a half has turned into one of the coolest. Sitting here right now sharing a message with the opportunity to impact millions of lives. It's really, really cool. So as I finish, I just want to ask you a few different questions. What it is is this. What would you do? What would you do if you were taking care of your kid and they had a blowout so bad that it went up their back, through their shoulder blades, out their shirt, and on their finger? I like to believe you would handle it a lot better than I would. And what would you do? If you got fired from a job that you loved and somebody told you that you were not good enough, how would you handle that? And what would you do if you were playing hide and seek with your kids and all of a sudden one of them collapsed on the ground and died in your arms? Listen, I hope some of these things never happen to you, but the one thing that's inevitable in life is you're going to face challenges. And when that time comes, that adversity comes knocking at your door, don't give it the greatest power that you have. The ability to always choose your response to any situation, no matter what. And when you're in the middle of that and your brain is urging you to focus on the negative, fight that off. And instead, remind yourself that you have a choice and go out and look for the gift in your situation. Because that's the only way. The only way that you're going to be able to go out and spark your potential and achieve extraordinary things that make the world a better place. Thank you.